Are you excited about today? We are very excited today. Um, you know, the whole West Coast is excited today and um, industry and um, the communities are very excited to see what Minister Jones has to say. Now, he's going to Black Ball to deliver this today. Uh, are all you mayors on the West Coast going too, are you? Yes, we will all be there. Um, yep, there's a lot of people travelling today for the event, so it's, it's going to be very good. And I understand you're also going to have lots of protesters there as well. Yes, we seem to have the protesters coming from um, the other side of the hill, from the built-up cities and the, um, you know, very fast-moving areas that are already um, (laughs) industrial and coming to our clean, pristine district to protest against what our communities Um, are. Do you have any EV charges in Blackball? No, we don't, so that may be a bit of a problem. <laughs> oh, well, there you go, you see. I bet you they're travelling in those horrible gas-guzzling, pollution, uh, genocidal-killing vehicles, but there you go. All right, now, um, what time is all this announcement going to go? When does when does the announcement happen, Tanya? Um, this is at 3.30 today, and it's a public open meeting um, with 150 capacity, but we're expecting it to be um, over capacity, really, so there'll be people probably outside, I would imagine. And have you been in contact, uh, the mayors on the West Coast, with Shane Jones and with the government over this issue? We've had good dialogue um, with Minister Jones since he's got in and we've been watching his announcements and and speaking with him and and talking to him about um, potential projects and these um, potential minerals and, and most of them are actually used in green technologies. If we want green new technologies, we need a lot of the minerals that have, um, that have, you know, prosperous here at the moment that companies are investing and looking in so you know we have had great interaction can you just take me through that because whenever we talk about mining on the west coast there's a sort of assumption that there's going to be an open strip coal mine somewhere um you've got access to much more mineral wealth than that Yes, we have and and you know the west coast has been mined and logged over many years and we still have um 84 percent um conservation land we're still the environmental conscience of the country but we have a lot of um, minerals that are now being used in new technologies, so the luminite and the zircon and the um, titanium. Then we have um, the um, antimony that's just really been discovered as a byproduct of gold that goes into alloys and, and um, batteries. So, you know, there's all these minerals that need, you know, we have um, the Spring Creek and there's a lot of talk about coal that we want to get that reopened, but it's actually a high silicon coal that's used in solar panels and wind turbines. And, you know, if you want new technologies, you need these products. Yeah, you're going to need that access to that. You're right. Listen, um, I'm just thinking, uh, the, the, if, if what are you expecting today? The, what is the announcement designed to do today as far as you're aware? I think the, and, um, it's designed to let us know what the future holds and that, you know, mining will be open and the strategy for the government and, and where they intend to head. And, and there are lots of prospects and companies that are looking here at the moment and, um, you know, some pretty clear marked out sites and um, giving the industry and those people and the investors and the communities confidence in the future ahead. Do you expect uh, him to announce any particular projects or any particular developments today? I don't think so yet, but I think he will be mm. talking individually. And, of course, there's the fast-tracking bill. But, you know, people are, um, are being scaremongered with the fast-tracking bill. It doesn't mean digging up the coast and, and not looking after the environment. There's still very stringent environmental um, rehabilitation that needs to be done and, and big steps that need to be crossed. And mining companies, um, you know, and that work on the West Coast, and some of them are Australian, are, are the best in the field at what they do. And, you know, if we take these products from unsustainable countries that are, you know, not doing it properly, then we are hypocrites. Now, you're um, the Grey District, uh, so your home base is what, Grey Mouth, is it? Yes. Right, and so you go up to, do you, do you go up to Black Boar or is that, is that somewhere else? Yes, no, that's in my district. So that's in your district as well. Today. Right, so I'm, I'm interested in what, because I know, listen, I don't take this badly. I've travelled along the West Coast and I've got to be honest with you, Greymouth is not the most attractive of um, provincial uh, towns in this country. Um, It's always got that sort of look of, I could do with a lick of paint. Um, You know, you you know what I mean. I do, but I will say that we've had many of our big earthquake prone buildings coming down and we've got new developments happening and we're starting for the first time in a long time to see some big change, which is great. 
Right, because the, the, what I'm interested in is if there is uh, an extractive industry that's suddenly given the green light on the West Coast, does that mean that places like Greymouth suddenly have a rejuvenation of population and economic growth? Oh, definitely. You know, for one, you know, for you know, there's, for the Spring Creek, we're looking at 57 extra jobs. For Barrytown, for the uh, mineral sands, they're looking at another 50 jobs. And, you know, there's, there's way more projects than that that are touted around the districts. And, you know, that's more people coming into the district with high earning jobs. You know, our school roles go up, our communities mm. prosper. The wives mm. are shopping, or the, you know, we hope to get a lot of women in these mines as well. But, you know, the, the retail prospers. And, you know, we saw that in the days when the mines were open. It, it just, the whole community gets buoyed. And these companies look after our towns and our districts as well. So um, are you expecting the jobs that are going to be created? Well, one assumes that there will be hundreds of jobs, I would think, rather than thousands initially. But if there are mm -hmm. hundreds of jobs to be created, are they coming from the workforce that's currently unemployed or underemployed on the West Coast? Or are they going to need to come from migrants who don't currently reside on the coast? To a certain extent, you know, we like, um, you know, opportunities for our young people. We had a great careers expo last week where the mining companies were talking to the um, young kids coming out of uh, school. And, you know, some of them could be on $80,000 as a starting training wage. And um, we have a lot of people that leave the wow. West Coast that have left their families to work in Australia. Mm. And, you know, hopefully we'll get some of them back because when they flew in, flew out over COVID, some of them picked their families up and moved because their families, you know, they got stuck and they didn't see their kids for a couple of years. So, you know, some of them have parents and we hope to, you know, get some of those guys back to be working here and having a good lifestyle. Um, a couple of things have always also intrigued me about the West Coast. The first is, why do they keep on voting Labour? I'm sorry. I mean, I know, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's odd to me. Is it just for historical sort of instinct that allows them to go into the polling booth no matter what's happening and just keep on putting a tick by the red box? Well, surprisingly, wasn't it? The, you know, Labor was, um, you know, created from the mining industry, but I see in the last elections that, you know, people really sent a strong message this time and, and that changed because the whole roots of the West Coast, that's what it has been of our forefathers and they created mm. the Labor movement, but it seems to have shifted quite dramatically from what it originally was. Well, and, and, and that also, you're going to raise the ire. I mean, I'm not, I'm not diminishing this because you're going to get a lot of pushback, particularly from that sort of Wellington glitterati set um, uh, and obviously from the sort of Christchurches in Auckland, the, the Teals, the, the rather well-heeled public servants and school teachers and the likes like that who are apparently travelling to see you today. Um, do you expect a lot of opposition from environmentalists? Do you have a lot of internal opposition to uh, opening up mining on the coast? We don't. Our communities are generally supportive and I challenge anybody to come here and drive 100k in any direction and see any sign of it. And once all this starts up, you won't see it either. It's, um, it's about time the kids in this country started learning where their bloody cell phones and their computers come from because, you know, they need these minerals. And these guys love to tell us what to do down here when they live in their big glossy cities. But, you know, we are the environmental conscious and we will still be the most pristine district in the country. But People just don't understand. And, you know, the media, that's, you know, it's good talking to you today because if the, you know, mainstream media turn up today, you know what they'll show? They'll show the protesters, but they won't show the very vast amount, which I would say is 95% that are actually for mining and are very excited about this visit today. And it will be very disappointing, but that's what I predict we will see. Yeah, you know, it is sad. And um, uh, listen, I think your prediction is probably right, Tanya, that um, the mainstream media have a view that... Um, mining on the west coast is bad too they will go and interview the forests and birds and the fishing games of this world and um you're absolutely right you'll be seen as some sort of troglodytic um individuals who uh, frankly have just come out of the cave so you'll feel perfectly safe going back into them and i've done interviews with q a and fina owen and, and people like that that you know and we've done these great things about you know what these new technologies these minerals are used for solar panels and so forth and they turn around and they show the one line so are you happy with these going into weapons you know this is the way that they're portraying it and then we take them to mine sites where they we show them the pit and we take them to the regenerated site and the beautiful pristine new you know the foliage that's popping up there and they never show that they'll show the pit but you know the, the other side of the story never gets told and it's just very frustrating for us.
Mm. And I, well, it's that sense of alienation that a lot of provincial New Zealanders got from Wellington, Badoo Fair, and from the mainstream media in general. Um, I, I understand that.